So, and there was another story in MLB that recently that kind of caught my eye and I, I know it caught your eye as well. And it kind of sort of is connected to this whole Jordan Hicks thing. Again, I, as I mentioned, when I introduced the story about Hicks, the Cardinals were trying to find ways to, you know, keep his arm preserved, limiting his, his innings or, you know, his, his exposure, however you want to call it. And this article popped up about the Texas Rangers and how they implemented a new kind of program to keep their young pitchers safe in their minds. They were looking to prevent more injuries and it, and it involved a, a shutdown period where as soon as they, they would draft these pitchers who maybe had kind of big workloads in, in their high school or even college careers and maybe even that season in their amateur final amateur season. And, and the first thing that they did was they just shut them down for four to six weeks and didn't didn't have them pick up a ball whatsoever. And it was another one of these programs where they just were limiting, 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 and not allowing them to throw. And there were some other points in the article, but but the reason that stuck out to me so much was because 10 years ago, you know, here we are in 2019. I remember 10 years ago in 2009 when former Rangers pitcher Nolan Ryan became a I think he became the executive assistant to the owner or something like that. And he suddenly had a lot of influence over what happened with the Rangers and the Rangers going back to the days of Tom house being their pitching coach have always had trouble keeping their young pitchers healthy. And so they've, they've gone through all these different methods and, and uh, training theories and all kinds of things to try to keep these pitchers healthy. And, and they just keep having a lot of trouble doing that no matter what they all these out of the box things that they keep trying and I remember 10 years ago Nolan Ryan was saying oh if you ask Nolan Ryan why pitcher so many pitchers are blowing out their elbows he would state right back because they're not throwing enough that's it that was that was all that was in his mind there was there was no other reason they were, they were not throwing enough so they were not conditioning their arms so he had a lot of influence on the Rangers program so all of a sudden, all of the Rangers pitchers were on programs where they were throwing more, probably more than they'd ever thrown before, because there was this idea and theory that the more you throw, the more you strengthen your arm, and the more that you strengthen your arm, the more you will prevent injury. That was that was where the philosophy was for, for a long time, too. And it didn't really do anything to help prevent Tommy John surgeries. I don't even want to get into all the names of the pitchers who, who were hurt. And now they're going the other route. They went from all kinds of throwing for their young pitchers to shutting them down. And it's like, it's, it's just so interesting to me to watch this whole circle of, you know, going around and around and around and, and, and the Rangers are, and I don't want to pick on the Rangers. I'm just pointing them out as an example, because they're kind of a, a microcosm of everything that's been going on in MLB with all these teams and all these people trying to figure out how to prevent injuries. You know, th th they're going both ways. Don't let them throw, make them throw more. And, and it's just another example of not being able to keep pitchers safe. And you saw the article as well, and I know that you have your own perspective on it. And I think that your perspective will actually lead us into our teaching moment. So why don't you start to talk about what you thought about that article, which we will have a link to in the show notes. Yes, and I think the take-home message from the teaching moment this week will be titled, Don't Throw the Baby Out with the Bathwater, meaning the Rangers are scratching their head about this situation because what the article said, for those of you who didn't read it, is that they went ahead and did this program to preserve the arms of their new draftees that had just come out of a high school and a college season. And instead of having them show up in Arizona and start throwing, they shut them down, not just for the purpose they describe of controlling their throwing, but to introduce them to what it's like to be a pro ba a baseball player, but mostly to fill in the gap with education during the time when they felt if they could shut them down from a load that they had had during college and high school, that when they re-entered, their chances of injury would be less. Now, I don't know if this, did, so the first question is, what did they have a lot of injuries with their rookies? And that's what led them to this? Probably, because usually you don't try to create something unless there's a need for it. 
And so what I like about what the Rangers did is they thought about the transition time for a pitcher and they decided that this is what they were going to do. But again, you're right, Joe, they are doing, and we mentioned this in the prior segment, they were looking to these external factors like, well, let's just not let them throw. Let's take time off. Let's, uh, you know, fill the space in with education, et cetera. So they were introducing other things. But the point is that they were looking to shutting down something, which I'm not sure that all the pitchers even needed. So here's what concerns me. This is what sent, sent up the first flag. There's no way that every pitcher you drafted is the same. So if you have a policy that's kind of radical like this to help the pitcher, it couldn't be right for everyone. One pitcher may need to shut down for three weeks to recover his arm. Another pitcher may need to shut down, not shut down at all. Maybe he didn't get enough innings. Who knows? But the first thing is, is you don't come up with a cookie cutter plan unless there's a real good reason for it. Secondly, What they implied was that they expected these guys to return to play and not have any injuries. And this huge percentage, Joe, I don't know if you remember from the article, I don't, but to the audience, it's a huge percentage of these guys ended up, a whole bunch of them had Tommy John surgery. This is what their frustration was. They're going, what did we do wrong? They thought the deloading program, which is what they call it, would prevent injuries. And in fact, the number of surgeries on their rookies had increased. Yeah, it turned out that 54% of the participants in the program, six it was six out of 11, wound up having Tommy John surgery. Which is insane, right. So first of all, they looked at a period on a calendar when they were going to give these guys time off, and then they knew when they would have to start throwing again. And somehow they didn't match up what they needed from them at a certain time, which probably would be rookie ball in September or something, they didn't match that up properly with what they were going to be doing during the summer. So when it, when you're thinking about shutting down and coaches, I've, we talk about this all the time, or parents, if you're saying, oh, can I shut my kid down in June all the way through September? Well, if he's got a showcase in September or a tryout, he can't be shut down. The only way you can shut him down in the summer is if he doesn't have to do anything till November and December. In other words, shutdowns have to be created with the end in mind. And you can't move the dates of rookie ball. You know, Arizona show up time is September, whatever. You have to plan for that. So that's number one. But so what I like is They're trying to do something. What I don't like is, is that they're doing the external stuff. Each pitcher, each rookie should be evaluated for the risk factors for injury. Combine that with their profile. Combine that with what they tell you about how much they hurt or recover or where they hurt after they pitch. That's how you come up with the formula. So what I think that they forgot was that while they were trying to do this deloading situation, they weren't taking into account who needed what and also how do you reload them. And the truth is, is just a generic thing. Pitchers need to pitch, but they also need to be strong to pitch. So when you're talking about how much someone's going to throw, Once you are in the cycle of throwing that a pitcher is in, and when I say throwing, I mean he's flat ground. Pitching is pitching. Two different things, throwing, pitching. If he is in a throwing cycle, he should throw and always get recovery for how much he throws on a given day. If he's in a pitching cycle, he needs to pitch per the recovery calendar, and he needs to pitch again the day that he's recovered. If he's in a cycle that he is off, then he needs to be strength training to the max for a pitcher, because then that is the purpose of that cycle. And then after that, he re-enters with the throwing program, which has to be done systematically 
with systematic recovery and has to have the end in mind that he needs to pitch on a certain day so that you know the kind of length to each cycle of that throwing program you're going to give him. Then once he's pitching, he pitch, he pitches. He can't be two different people in the same cycle. If you cycle a pitcher's year or you cycle his career for this year, you are either in a pitching mode, you're in a throwing only mode, or you're in a strength training off season mode. And whatever mode you're in, you have to do it and do it wisely. You have to go to the exact max that you're going to need to be able to perform in the next cycle. You have to have the recovery per the load that you happen to be utilizing that day. So if a pitcher is working up his pitch count and he's at 79 pitches in a bullpen, getting him ready for his starting season, which is what he needs to be conditioned for in a bullpen, then he has to have four days recovery from that. Don't have him pitching in two days. Don't say, oh, well, we're not going to let him pitch again for a week. No, he's in a pitching mode. So the day he's recovered, he has four days recovery. On that fifth day, he's pitching again. Not the sixth day, not the seventh. If it's a two-day recovery, on the third day, he's pitching again. Not one day, not four days. That's how you build them. Same thing with the throwing program, the flat ground. You figure out, is he going to have one day off or two days off? How many throws is he going to make, 50 or 75? You know, what distance are we taking him at? Then he recovers depending on what happens. So putting him in that phase but not letting him be in that phase means that you're mixed up about what he's supposed to be doing, and it never turns out right. You can't accomplish two things. He's either a pitcher that's – conditioning and recovering from pitching, or he's in a flat ground throwing where he's not pitching, but he's throwing. That's a whole different story. Or he's in an off season of strength training. Then you transition him correctly. But what happens is when you're not sure about how to take care of a pitcher, you start to try to do too many things. Let's have him pitch, but let's not have him pitch too much. That's dangerous. If you're worried about how much he's pitching, then there's something else that you're not doing. Now, what is that other thing we could be doing when we're worried about pitchers? Let's eliminate the risk factors. We know that late arms do this. We know that leading with the elbow tears the labrum. I just read a research article the other day. You can't believe the percentage of labrum surgeries in the major leagues. That is from having a leading with the elbow problem and the supraspinatus injuries. This is from not having the arm in the right position during the motion. I mean, the percentages were so high, it was scary, Joe. If we know we're having all these surgeries, let's look at, is he doing anything that could affect his labrum? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, to your point, Angel, you know, I, again, I don't like picking on the Rangers because there actually are a lot of things. And, and again, look look in the show notes to read the article. Um, there were a lot of things that they were trying to do and they were on the right track. Like one of the things that they did in addition to deloading or stopping them from throwing was, you know, they, they said that they wanted to give them an introduction to professional baseball, teach them how to eat properly, teach them how to work out in the weight room properly, specific to pitching. Uh, they taught shoulder and elbow strengthening programs, an arm care program. And yet the one thing that I didn't see in the article about all this teaching was taking a look at their mechanics and teaching them correct mechanics. You know, there, there could be a point made here that Maybe their program could have made a lot of sense, and we might not have even read this article as a failure, if maybe those six out of 11 pitchers that blew out their elbows, it could just have been that that all of those pitchers had a really bad mechanical flaw that was going to... No, I would say that 100% that is probably what happened. That's why it's don't throw the baby out with the bathwater to the Rangers. Giving a pitcher time off... And I'm talking about you're giving them full time off is never a bad thing. It's only bad when you don't use the time wisely and you're not having it accompany the other systematic cycles that a pitcher needs to be on. In other words, you don't say to a pitcher, "Okay, don't pitch for two months. And then he goes and sits on the couch. No, there is no off season for a pitcher. There's an uh, he's off season from pitching. 
and he might be off season from throwing, but he's always doing something. And he's got to be other than, you know, okay, I need two weeks to go on vacation. He's got to be in a strength training cycle. He can't train the same way in the gym as uh, when he's not, when he's throwing as he does when he's not throwing. So you're absolutely right, Joe, that six weeks could have been filled with, let's look at the, the film from your last high school or college game. And let's start working on the things that we feel you need to understand. And, oh, boy, we see he's been leading with his elbow all through the season. Okay, strength coach, come here. See this guy, this action right here? Okay, his labrum, his shoulder. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to strengthen his shoulder. And I want you to do, you know, make sure that he's strengthened to offset the damage that he could have done by pitching this way. And then you have this place where you start to work with the mechanics. Now, you have to know what you're talking about to be able to do this. So you got to have the right people. But here's the Rangers are not short on hiring people. They're always hiring someone and bringing in all the latest stuff to try to figure out ways to monitor this, do this, do that. So let's start looking at the pitcher and his body to solve the problem. In other words, when you've got something going on, and these pitchers that all had the surgery, they must have been exhibiting some sort of problem up into it. I mean, what happened to Jordan Hicks, that does happen, acute injuries. But how many times have we seen a pitcher, boom, he's good and then he's bad? Not that much. Most of the time it's, well, my forearm's been bothering me. Oh, I was on the IL last month for 30 days. Or, you know, I mean, it's always a story. There was no story for Jordan. Mostly there's a story. So all these guys, there was some blind spot that the team had. But to the Texas Rangers, don't stop your idea of what you think. If intuitively you feel these guys are coming out of school and they're kind of a wreck and there's a, you know, I have players that uh, go on to the minor leagues because I've been in business a long time and I've had coaches call and say to me, do you think he should just start pitching? Does he need time off? What does he tell you? How does he look to you? And I say, let me call you back. And I call the pitcher. I have a complete investigation with him. And then we come up with the answer. And it's never the same for each pitcher. So Texas Rangers, your idea isn't crazy. But I think that there was a blind spot and it wasn't blended in. It's sort of like, you know, you go to the deli and you buy the meat, but you forget to buy the sandwich. And so now you're not enjoying it. You're like, what happened? I thought I was going to love this. Well, you forgot all the accoutrement, you know. So you have to have all the pieces in place. And it's not too late for them to reorder this. But I think this is a take home message. And I think what we're seeing here is what we were seeing with the St. Louis Cardinals. And I think we're seeing it across the board. The major leagues are trying to do something, but you can't do it when you're dealing with all the external stuff, spin rate, innings, pitch counts. All of those things do not matter in the big picture. The body has to come first. If you have a flat tire, you don't have your car towed in and say, please put it on a computer and tell me if my car's okay. No, you have air put in the tire. Then you see what happens. You have to deal with the physical being, the pitcher himself first. And that means his mechanics, his body, his recovery, et cetera. Then you start to blend in the other components that fit his model. You just don't overlay a model that isn't personal to him. So I think while I'm feeling like the major leagues are talking out of both sides of their mouth, I'm hoping that this still is in the direction that we want to go. And that with some of these frustrations, like why didn't this deloading program work that they're scratching their head saying, okay, it's not wrong but we may need additional things. And that's what I hope they say. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater coaches. So I, I feel like the Rangers were so close. They were really on the right track, but I keep seeing the same thing with all these different teams in major league baseball. They're all trying to keep pitchers safe. They're trying to prevent the injuries, but it's, it's going back to your example of, you know, getting a flat tire in your car, you know, you get a flat tire and, and your car stops going. You don't put more gas in the car. 
and you don't put a turbocharger on the car to make it go faster when you have a flat tire. You you assess the situation, you find out why the car is not moving. You see you see the car is, is the injury to the car is due to the flat tire, so you put more air in the tire or you change the tire. You you don't, you know, again, you don't put more gas in the car. So, you know, I feel like that's kind of what's going on in MLB right now. They just keep looking at the wrong things instead of honing in on what the, the real issue is. And it's a physical issue. And they just, for whatever reason, it's just a blind spot, as, as you mentioned. Is there anything more you want to say? I'll just go back to the whole uh, take home message. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. When you've got an idea and an intuition that something would work, just package it correctly and make sure that you're starting to pull in all the details. Not seeing the forest for the trees would be another way to describe what I what I keep seeing happen with teams and some of the methods they're trying to use to improve things. So the good news is most of these things aren't working. Yeah. That means that they will keep their mind open. 